Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Careers Week. My name is Mandeep Mutharu and I am a herbarium curator and a digitizer working at the Royal Horticulture Society Gardens at Whistling. Um, and today's talk um, will be all about taking you on a journey into a curator's world um, and show you what we do, why we do it. And finally, I will uh, talk a little bit about how I ended up having this job. So let's start. Now, if you go and visit um, any of the botanic gardens, um, uh, you know, the very basic site is you'll see a lot of plants and you'll see a lot of gardeners tending the plants and looking after them. But what you don't see is the sort of work which is going behind the scenes. Now, as you can see over here in this slide, um, we got somebody uh, got this blue delphinium plant and they are color charting it and somebody's doing color charting this particular plant and this whole equipment uh, which cons uh, um, consists of a notebook, a pencil, a pair of secateurs, rulers and all these things. Um, this is basically our curators uh, collecting and pressing equipment. And I will go into details a bit later on, but how do we use it and why do we use this equipment? Now, before we start, um, I would like to ask you a question. Does anyone know uh, what a herbarium is? Um, most people think that herbarium is um, a collection of herbs because that's how it sounds, or it's a collection of plants. Uh, but very, very close. A herbarium is a collection of preserved plant specimens and associated data used for scientific studies. So what we do is we go around into the gardens, we collect the plants from there, we bring them back into the herbarium, we press them and then we mount them in, onto a piece of paper along with all the information. And once that's done, they are all uh, nicely preserved in the cupboards like these. And the end product looks something like this. As you can see, I think these are the camellias. As you can see, they're very, very, very thin, very, very flat. Um, and um, they are um, on a piece of paper. Um, and they are put, just put up into the fires. And then that's how we preserve them. So the next question will arise that why do we need to, you know, why, why are we doing um, what we are trying to do? So, um, as you can see over here, uh, the main purpose uh, for what we do is basically to document everything. So, RHS specializes in um, a, a certain type of plants, they're called cultivated plants. So, in general, there are two types of plants. One, they are called the wild specimens or the wild plants, which occur naturally in, it, in their habitat. So, anything we really see in the forest and on the roadside, things like that. Um, and then the other category is cultivated plants, so which are basically called the non-native species, where you will have uh, the crosses and um, things like, you know, if I like the color of one plant and if I like the character of the other plants and how we'll cross them and make, make up a new variety. So that's what we specialize in. So our aim is basically to go around all the UK garden to the UK gardens and um, collect every single a plant of a particular genus of a family and we can document them and just create like a beautiful collection um, uh, of, of these dried and pressed specimens uh, which are very valuable for research purposes in the future. So I'll just quickly go through um, um, uh, just to show you that how this process is um, uh, is all captured. So as you can see over here, um, one of my uh, colleagues, Barry, who has been working here for a very long time, um, he will go out into the garden, he will uh, choose a particular plant that they want to collect, and he is going to take a picture of that particular plant, so just to uh, see uh, how the plant was uh, growing in its natural habitat uh, and things that we can't really figure out once we have taken the plant out of the habitat, so things like how wide it was, though, what's the height of the plant. Once it's brought up in back into the, um, the herbarium, 
uh, where we'll then spend some time um, color charting them. Because as I said, we we very much work on the varieties of the plants and for us, colors um, uh, matter the most. So all kind of details of how the flower looks, the shape of the flower, uh, the, the all the details of the stamens, the anthers, the sepals and petals and everything. So we'll try and gather all that um, um, uh, data and then we'll put that onto a label next to the specimen. So once that's done, uh, it's time for us to press the plant. So as you can see over here, this is a pressing, well basically it's, it's called a press, it's a pressing equipment. So what we'll do is that once we have selected a series of plants, we'll try and put them in between the pieces of papers and once it's all done we've got a nice big bundle and then we'll uh, wrap it around uh, with this red strap very tightly wrapped it around um, and uh, after this they are ready to go into the dryers um, and uh, as the the name gives itself it's basically a drying cabinet uh, with have the temperature of around 30 32 degrees so that we can uh, take all the moisture out of the plant before um, it goes onto a piece of paper. So I will show you how the uh, end product looks. Right, so we saw how um, a plant was pressed and it was mounted and now this is how it kind of looks on a piece of paper. Now I will. I thought I'll just show you um, what my um, a team, my herbarium team, basically entails. So we'll have some of the botanists, and as you can see one of the botanists over here. She's got a hand lens in her hand, and she's just looking through, um, you know, any kind of details, and she's just um, uh, um, looking up into that particular plant. Um, and then we'll have some of the um, people who are called horticultural taxonomists. So taxonomist is a person who is um, uh, who deals with the name changes. So he's he was experiencing with the naming of the plant and the name changes of the plant. And then we have the curators and digitizers such as myself. So uh, people who are are responsible to create the collection, to look after the collection, and then digitize them. So I will show you in a little bit of time that how um, uh, the digitization work is done and what does a digitizer do. Now over here, oh sorry, my screen is playing up a little bit, uh, but I thought I will show you first the the work um, the Whistley's oldest specimen. So over here you can see um, this one is a, a dried and pressed plant from 1731. So um, you know it's nearly kind of more than 200 years old, um, and it's a very in a very good state. And you can still kind of have a little bit of that lavender sniff from there. Um, so we 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 very cherish um, this uh, this particular specimen. Uh, one of our oldest one, so it's a lavender specimen. And the other specimen, the other specimen over here is our um, um, very recent discovery. It's actually a, a potato uh, plant, so it's the Solanum tuberosum. And why it's called Darwin's potato? Because this particular plant or the specimen was actually collected by Charles Darwin himself during the Voyage of the Beagle, uh, where he thought that he has actually discovered the edible kind of variety of plant of the of potato, uh, which unfortunately wasn't the case. But nevertheless, um, it's still a very precious specimen for us. And it was the start of the journey when they started progressing and uh, people were looking into the different kind of species and genuses. So uh, that's the Darwin potato for you. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what a digitizer do. So this is a digitization suite. So over here, as you can see, uh, my colleague is sitting down and we've got a very special camera, a very um, expensive piece of kit. Um, we have this uh, camera attached to this uh, equipment, which is, which is called a herb scan. It's basically uh, a set with the kind of uh, LED lights attached to it. And what we do is we just put all uh, the, uh, the mounted specimens 
onto this platform. And after doing some of the settings, uh, we capture the image. And the image that we capture is very highly detailed. Uh, so um, it basically gives you all the, uh, the details, like the minute hairs and all sorts of things that you will see, more or less looking through a microscope, but it gives you a very good view. And I will show you in a bit how it looks. So over here, we've been working with the uh, the website called JSTOOL. Um, so uh, this is where we started. So this is where I started my job, basically. Um, we had the um, the project called Global Plants Initiation, and uh, we were uh, aiming to put most one of our crucial collections onto JSTOOL's website. So I've just captured, like, this is how it looks on the screen. As you can see, on the left side, there's a little thumbnail of um, the particular plant. This is a rhododendron cultivar. And over here, you'll have the all, um, the, the very detailed description of what the plant is. And then when you start zooming into it, um, uh, we'll, we'll try and get it over here. You can see, you can do zoom in uh, and I can zoom in 100% into that particular plant and I will show you how it looks. So here, we can see, can you see the, the hairs over here? Can you see the detail of the stains and the anthers? And even sometimes you can even see the spores. And the most fascinating thing is that I can do online measurements. So I can actually measure the length of this, um, uh, the, the, the stamen and the anther, even the petals or the sepals. Um, so it's basically looking a specimen through kind of like a microscope. Uh, but uh, there is no need for you to go and visit a particular herbarium. I mean, say sometimes uh, we don't have that particular specimen and Q has it. And then we'll say, oh, we need to go to Q. We'll have to, somebody needs to get the specimen out. And then it'll be more kind of handling the specimen as well. With this technology, because we are capturing the images, uh, um, the detailed images, there is a lesser need for people to travel and it's available worldwide. You just need a laptop. You just need um, a computer and you need a screen to, to see all these these lovely specimens on. All right, so I think now I will talk a little bit about myself, so my my career journey. Uh, so I was born and brought up in the north side of um, India. Um, it's, it's a state called Punjab. Um, and after doing my schooling there, I did my master's in plant physiology and biochemistry from uh, the Punjab Agriculture University, again in India. And after that, um, I got married into this country. So um, um, I came here in 2010 and uh, after browsing a little bit, um, I wasn't exactly looking, uh, I wasn't exactly getting the opportunities um, as I was in back in Punjab because we have more agriculture, we had more uh, plant physiology stuff. So I couldn't find anything uh, there, but then um, an opportunity came up at Kew Gardens and they said they're looking for curators, they're looking for people who can work in the herbarium. So I started working there. And then I worked at the Natural History Museum as well um, in their herbarium. So altogether, I think for nine months, I was working as a volunteer um, and I gathered a lot of experience uh, from so many people. And um, um, it, it's, it's, it's a true learning curve, which I think is, is kind of missing, which was definitely missing back in back in India when I was there after finishing my master's. Um, and we're very lucky that we in this country we get this opportunity where you can go and you can uh, do a small the very kind of like uh, diplomas you can do the apprenticeships and um, you know and the organizations are very uh, they're, they're very welcoming so it's it's good way to get all the all this kind of experience so after working for about nine months in these organizations I finally ended up at the RHS um, as a around curating digitizer. So I started as a digitization job. So that was my main um, uh, job at that moment. And um, after that, everything kind of um, settled in. So now I'm, I'm an, uh, a STEM ambassador as well. Uh, and we have a brilliant education department back at Wisley. So we help with all sorts of um, uh, the kids' activities. We have uh, the 
uh, the small projects going on that where we work with the schools and we just want to uh, tell people more about what we do uh, and you know how can you help us as well um, and so far I've been I've been enjoying my job a lot and um, it's quite rewarding uh, because of the jobs and we usually have the uh, the annual meetings, we'll have some kind of conferences. I've been to Panama twice, uh, which was very fascinating. I've been to Chicago. So you, you get to go to these places and um, um, same thing goes with my colleagues and they have all these uh, botanical expeditions. People will go into different kind of um, um, places in different countries. Um, and they'll go and collect the plants. So it's 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 quite, an, quite a fascinating job. And especially if you, if you love... Um, plants if you if you like plants you like the economic part of the plants um so so yeah so that's that's how i started and i've been working here for over the past nine years and finally just wanted to show you um um where i showed you those cupboards in the very first slide we're actually moving into a new building as the old building wasn't uh, equipped with the right temperature and humidity controls because one thing that I forgot to mention is that um, once the the plants they are all nicely pressed up and they are ready to go into the cupboards there are some sort of beetles who love to eat and munch upon our plants uh, because we don't have the temperature and humidity controls um, it's very hard to have that pest control but we're very lucky that uh, we have the opportunity now that we have the new building coming up uh, we are going to place all our lovely specimens in these kind of blue boxes and they're going to be racked up one uh, nicely in, uh, in the uh, controlled environmental conditions now. Um, and because of this, um, it's, it, it's not going to be any longer uh, behind the scene work because people will be able to see us actually doing the mounting stuff, the, doing the pressing, uh, the taxonomy work and the digitizers doing their work. And um, um, I'm hoping that I will see a lot of people and a lot from you guys and, you know, um, just come over and uh, give it a go, have a look. And we have uh, lots of other departments as well. We have the, the entomology as well. We have people who specialize in soil. Um, so, yeah, uh, there is a lot of variety. There is a lot to learn as well. So I hope that you all enjoyed the talk and I was able to um, demonstrate a little bit what a curator is because I, I know people go to the museum and they know what a museum curator is uh, but very very few people have heard about herbarium curators or what actually a herbarium is so um, I really hope that I've motivated you uh, to just go outside and just pick one of those your favorite plants and as, as I used to do when when I was young just place that little plant um, in between my pick books um, at, um, in the college and university and just, just wait for it to just come out. So um, I hope you enjoyed that and I will leave my contact details. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact us. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.